Hey everyone, in this video we'll discuss the bubble sort algorithm. Now, keep in mind bubble sort isn't the most efficient solution for sorting large arrays because the performance degrades quickly as the number of items you need to sort grows. But it is an introductory algorithm and it's commonly taught in universities, so we'll take a look at it. Let's see how it works. Bubble sort, like many other algorithms, divides the array into a sorted and an unsorted partition. Now, this partitioning is done logically, meaning that we don't create separate array instances. Instead, we use a single array to represent what has been sorted and what remains unsorted. And we do that by using variables. So, when we initiate the algorithm for this array, we have a variable called last unsorted index, which as the name suggests, represents the last index or the last element of the unsorted partition. Now, when we start our algorithm, the entire array is unsorted because no elements have been sorted yet. So the last unsorted index variable is initially set to 4. Now the implementation that I'm going to show you starts sorting from the left side of the array or at index 0. And that's why we have another variable i which is initially set to 0. And then we compare the element at index 0 with the element at index 1. And if the element at index 0 is larger than the element at index 1, we swap their positions. But if it's smaller, we don't do anything because of course we want to move larger elements towards the end of the array. Now in our case, 3 is less than 4, so we don't swap it. Next we increment i to 1, and now we compare the element at index 1 with the element at index 2. And here, 4 is greater than 1, so we swap them. Next we increment i to 2, and we compare the element at index 2 with the element at index 3. And here, 4 is greater than 2, so we swap them. Then we increment i to 3 and we compare the element at index 3 with the element at index 4. And since 4 is smaller than 5, we don't do anything and we just increment i to 4. At this point, i is equal to the last unsorted index, so we stop. After our first traversal, the largest element is now at the end of the array, so we set the last unsorted index to 3, as we consider the element at index 4 to be sorted. Now, to continue, we set i to 0 to start a new traversal, but this time with the last unsorted index set to 3. And again, is the element at index 0 greater than the element at index 1? It is, so we swap them, and we increment i to 1. Now, is the element at index 1 greater than the element at index 2? And it is, so we swap them, and we increment i to 2. Finally, is the element at index 2 greater than the element at index 3? It isn't, so we do nothing and we just increment i to 3. At this point, i equals the last unsorted index, meaning we reach the last element of the unsorted partition, so we stop. With that, 4 is now at its correct position, so our last unsorted index is now set to 2. So now everything from the beginning of the array to index 2 represents the unsorted partition, while everything from index 3 to the end represents the sorted partition. Then i is set to 0 to start the next traversal in the same manner, and we continue incrementing i comparing the element at i with its neighboring element and performing swaps when the neighbor is smaller until the entire array is inside the sorted partition. So, as mentioned, the bubble sort algorithm sorts an array by swapping its elements. So, let's start by creating our swap method. Make sure you make it static because we're going to call it from the main method. It takes three parameters, the array we're sorting, and the two indices of the elements we want to swap. Next, we check if i equals j. If the indices are the same, no swapping is needed, so we return. If they're not the same, we create a temporary variable called temp and store the value of array i in it. We then store the value of array j into array i. Now, array i is overwritten, but it's okay because we stored its initial value in our temporary variable called temp. And we now store the value of temp into array j. And that's our swap method. Now, let's implement the bubble sort algorithm. Initially, the entire array is unsorted. So we set the last unsorted index to the last index of the array, which is array.length minus 1. And we'll continue iterating as long as the last unsorted index is greater than 0. And after each iteration, we're going to decrement last unsorted index. So in this case, last unsorted index starts at 4. And after the first iteration, it becomes 3, 
as the value at index 4 becomes part of the sorted partition. And after the second iteration, it becomes 2, as the last two values will then be sorted. And this continues, decrementing by 1 in each iteration, and once it reaches 0, we can stop because the entire array will then be sorted. And for each iteration of the outer loop, we want to traverse the array, and we move the largest value from the unsorted partition into the sorted partition. So within the outer loop, we have an inner loop, which iterates from the beginning of the array up to the value of the last unsorted index. Because we don't need to go beyond the last unsorted index since those values are already sorted. And then we want to compare the value at i with its neighbor i plus 1. And if the value at i is greater than the value at i plus 1, we swap the two values. Because we want to move the largest values up to the end of the array. So if the value at array i is greater than the value at array i plus 1, we want to swap them. So we call the swap method and we'll pass the array i and i plus 1 as parameters. And with that, we're done with the bubble sort algorithm. Now let's have a look at how this algorithm performs. First, it is an in-place algorithm which means that we logically partition the array. And the benefit of an in-place algorithm is that it makes the algorithm more memory efficient because we don't need to create a separate array to do the sorting. Now, we do use a couple of local variables like the last unsorted index and i, but it's still considered an in-place algorithm if the extra memory you're using doesn't grow as the number of items grow. The time complexity of bubble sort is o to the squared n, which is quadratic. So in the worst case, the number of steps grows quadratically as the number of items you need to sort grows. For instance, if you're sorting 10 items, it might take around 100 steps. If you have 100 items, it could take approximately 10,000 steps and so on. Now remember, this is just an approximation to understand how the algorithm scales. So it's not an exact mathematical expression, but rather an indication of how this algorithm grows. And in this case, it grows quadratically. And a good way to figure out the time complexity is to count the loops. If there is one loop, it's usually linear time complexity. And if there are two loops, it's quadratic time complexity, which is what we have in bubble sort. And another thing to note is that bubble sort is a stable algorithm. This means that if you have two identical elements in an array, their relative positions remain the same once the array is sorted. So in this case, the red item comes before the green item. And once we've sorted the array, the red item will still come before the green item. And that's because when we compare two adjacent elements, we only swap them if the element at index i is greater than the element at index i plus 1. So once we compare these two elements, 2 is not greater than 2, so nothing happens. Therefore, their relative positions remain the same, and this algorithm is stable. So this was it for the bubble sort algorithm. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.